Staying Alive UK. Share your story. Hi, Tracy. How are you today? I'm doing wonderful. How are you? I'm also wonderful. Lovely to have you here. I am so excited to interview you uh, because you're a poet. I've never had a poet on the podcast yet. You're my first one. And uh, yeah, I'm delighted because I think well, we shared in the, the preamble to the interview uh, that I'm a kind of a reluctant poet. So I'm, I'm super excited to speak with you today. I am so excited to be here. Oh, good stuff. So uh, we should we should mention to the listeners as well, just briefly, that you were so fortunate to have found this podcast uh, because somebody cancelled. I do one interview a week and somebody cancelled and you managed to get the slot. And otherwise you would have had to wait till like December or the end of the year. So well done, you. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. So, okay, let's get started. I, I'm going to ask you a really, really open question, and then it's over to you, and I'll listen. And that is, um, tell us all your story, and how did you get to where you are today? Yes, so it is very interesting, my story. <laughs> Basically, at five years old, I knew I wanted to be a writer. Um, and it turned into poetry as I got older. When I was a teenager at 13, I started writing poetry. I also began performing poetry at 14. My mother took me to a book festival in my state, South Carolina. And it's funny, <laughs> it was an open mic and I was the youngest person in there. I had actually brought a folder of my poems that I had written. And so everybody was reading off a of paper. So my mother encouraged me to go up there and perform, but I think she thought I was just going to read it off a of paper too. But I didn't. I performed without the paper. Wow. And she confirmed to me that I had a gift. So from then, I just was like, I'm going to be a writer. That's what I'm going to do. But it didn't turn out like that. <laughs> Life happens. And of so- I am very close to my parents, especially my father. I'm a daddy's girl. And my father is a retired high school teacher, the same school over 40 years. So there was this kind of pressure for legacy because yes. I could teach as well. Like that was my ability to be able to teach. I love young people, even at a young age. So I thought that's what I was going to do, that I was going to follow in my father's footsteps. So yes. I tried for a Yes, I tried for 10 years to be a certified teacher in my state. And there was an exam at the time that I had to pass and I failed 10 times. Wow. So, yes, after the 10th time, I finally found the courage to tell my father that, nope, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm going to go after my real dream. So by I'm 33 now, but at 30 is when I decided, OK, I'm going to go after my real dream. But it's funny because I honestly, I, I'm not a big dreamer. Like I have, I have my dream of writing, but I'm not a big dreamer. So I just thought I was going to be um, doing my poetry on the side. I was working full time as a pre-K aide, which is a teacher assistant. So yes. that's what I thought I was going to do. So I am really that that example that you can come from pretty much nothing. I was considered the help to something more. So I started performing at local venues, um, churches, um, public events, just getting my name out there. But I started in 2020, January 2020, and the pandemic hit. Yes. <laughs> so it was like sink or swim. <clears throat> I knew that I, I'm always been different. My mother tells me I marched to a different drummer. So I decided to just kind of go out on a limb and um, worked on getting on radio. I booked myself for radio in March and it didn't stop. So between March 2020 and August 2020, I had booked myself for 22 radio shows. How did you so do that? that was, 
How, I'm curious, <laughs> how did you manage to get on 22 radio shows? <laughs> I basically was reaching out to producers, um, hosts, you know, just putting myself out there, seeing what happens. And it was funny because I tell people I just like learned as I went, you know, when it comes to my business, I just learned. as I went. Right. So right. I learned I learned what worked and what didn't work. One of the things that I really found out was I'm good at building relationships with people. I'm very personal. Yeah. And so by me being that personal, I was able to build connection and, you know, draw people to me so that in return, I could draw their audience to me. Yes. If I can draw you to me, then I can draw your audience to me. So I, I, I use that to my advantage. Great. So after rate, yes, <laughs> after radio, I was like, okay, I started um, a children's book series called Lynn Learns Lessons, and Lynn is my middle name. And so basically the book is for older youth, eight to 12 years old, and I was able to share the lessons that I learned in the 10 years of failing to become a certified teacher. So it was just my way to give back. So I guess in my journey, I also learned that when I help people, when I use my gift to help people, more opportunities and more doors open for yes. me. Yes. And I didn't even I didn't even realize that it's a term that servant leadership. I was like, I was doing this, you know, just because I thought it was the right thing to do. But there's a term for it, servant leadership. So I'm big on helping community and building other people. So using my name and, and what I can bring to the table to build other people. So with the I guess the radio, I was able to get more into the article, media articles, newspapers, and everything like that. But I will tell anybody what changed the trajectory of my business, my poetry business, was getting in the New York Times. So 2020 was like the radio and publications, but um, 2021 was getting in the New York Times. When I got in the New York Times, it was like, more opportunities just started coming up quickly because it was kind of like, you know, a little stalling when it came to the um, media articles and stuff, getting people to get back with me <laughs> in yes. a timely manner. But um, after New York Times, it was like, no, we, we're going to get on this. So it's like the people that were really interested, they got on it quicker. <laughs> yes. And, and I started um, actually getting awards um, this year, I've gotten um, six awards. One. Congratulations. <laughs> so I, I'm just like, wow, this is this is crazy. You know, I still I still remember being the help. <laughs> yes. And all of this this stuff is coming about. It's just amazing. So um, I just would tell anyone that when you have a passion, when you have a love for something. If you do it with a sincere heart and your goal is not to just elevate yourself, but to uplift someone, help someone, yes. you'll be surprised yeah. at the doors and the opportunities that come to you when you do that. Because I was able to get into a lot of um, exhibitions and I tell people I love exhibitions, like exhibit exhibits are my thing because I feel like that's a way for me to connect to the community, their community, my community, and just inspire. And so um, I love that. So that's what my big thing is, is like figuring out different ways for me to utilize my poetry to uplift. And yesterday I actually um, volunteered and read my two um, children's books to kids for a summer camp. And so they had it separated with the boys and the girls and I was just able to inspire them and, and encourage them that they can go after their dreams. Yes. So that, that's always a big factor for me when it comes to my poetry is that I utilize my poetry to help people see that nothing <laughs> is you know shorthanded that you can do great things. You don't need a great name. To do great things great oh, i love that yeah i love that and you, you were you were i interrupted you when you were saying about the award you you went to say one was for so what were all the awards that you got share that again oh it's mine i i've basically gotten a lot of um first 
So even if I didn't place first, I got a lot of first time awards. I got my first state award this year for uh, poetry. It was like arts and, and poetry. So that I got a state win. I got third place for that. I got a uh, third place for professionalism at a museum in Oklahoma. I got <laughs> one in the library in Colorado for my spoken word. Um, the UK was um, third place. Um, I was the other one for USA. So it was two of us. And um, that was a uh, like a blood society. So I'm also big on, like I said, community and helping those in need. So yes. any, any way that I can use my poetry to help people in need, I am like super for that. Right. And I get, I guess one of my goals is to eventually ba basically build up enough resources where I can continue to go into the community and do things for free, you know, yes. for those in need and um, use my voice to advocate for the suffering. Like yes. um, I would really like to do like maybe a voice over for um, St. Jude's Children's Hospital, the kids that have cancer, like things like that. That's what I want to do. You know, right. it's, it's about empowering people. Like, that's my thing. You know, I don't feel like I'm effective if I'm not empowering people. And I, I told my husband the other day that the success of others is my success. Yes. Yeah. That's awesome. That's great. I, I love that. And where's that come from? You know, you, you mentioned the term servant leadership. I, I haven't heard that term. I, I'm interested in the term because this is what a little bit what this podcast is about too. You know, I have small business owners on this podcast. I don't earn anything from the podcast, but I'm helping my guests to have a voice about their business, their journey, their struggle, their challenge to help inspire other potential new business owners or even existing small business owners, because I'm passionate about small business, because I'm one too. And where has, I, I mean, you're really passionate about, I can tell by the way you, you express it in terms of what you want to do for other people and community. And, and I know you started very young with writing and poetry, which is incredible. But where, where has that sense of um giving come from is it your parents your upbringing um my i will say my upbringing but um also my faith like i said i'm going to be very transparent um when i was in my early 20s um middle 20s i was very selfish very um greedy you know about myself and I felt like I was unstoppable when it came to my poetry because even though um I went through bullying and low self-esteem um in middle school I used my poetry as an outlet to be seen to be heard and be known so I kind of felt limitless with my poetry so I'm glad I didn't get opportunities to to pursue my poetry then because I wouldn't have been effective for anyone because I would have made it about me yes so I will say I had a personal divine encounter um when I graduated college my I guess in 2011 I went to China this is when I was still trying to pursue teaching I went to China to teach English there in Beijing China and my encounter was with this homeless man. Yes. He, was, he was outside of um, the apartment that I lived at um, near the school that I worked. And I would see him a lot, you know, and this one particular day I felt led to give him money. And when I tried to give him uh, money, their money, he was kind of like in his language, like, no, you know, no, this is not necessary, but I insisted. And after I walked off, I felt like pull on me, the, this shame, honestly, I'm getting emotional just thinking about it. 
I felt this shame that I had been so selfish and greedy and just, you know, trying to make things about me. And so throughout this journey, I've just learned the value of helping people. And that's what a servant leader is. So basically the traditional leadership is, you know, you have the top person, that that plateau that yes. people, you know, look up to. Yeah. Servant leaders are at the bottom and they are utilizing their authority to help uplift others to the top. Yeah. That's a simple way for me to put it, serving leaders. So I don't consider myself like it's about me. It's about no, it's about utilizing what I have, what resources I have, what um, things I can bring to the table to help you succeed. So I saw a video and I like how this this guy put it. He said, you need to have the idea of what can I do to make you more successful than me? Yeah. That's a servant leader. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's I I I do have a lot of uh, what's the word um, synchronicity perhaps or you know with that with that concept uh, no that's not the right word I've affinity with that. Um, yeah, really, really interesting. And wow, if only the world was like that, <laughs> it would be such a beautiful world. And well, someone, someone, you know, small acorns and all that, um, some people need to be leading the way. And I'm glad you're, you're on the, on the world doing that. Thank you. Yes. Okay. When I, I just want to go back a little bit. And you said you started writing something when you were five, did you say? Five. Yes. Do you remember that? Do you I still remember? Yeah. I do remember that. I <laughs> I was that kid that um there was this show um on PBS um where I live called Pappy Drew It. So Pappy taught you how to like draw pictures and he would go step by step on how to draw pictures. And so I basically became my own writer and illustrator. So my mom would have this print paper and I would use a lot of the print paper <laughs> to, to draw pictures and write stories. <laughs> it was it was interesting. I was I was always different. <laughs> That's all I can say. I was just different. And is 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 there a um, lineage in your family where there are writers? My mother. Ah, right. So tell me about that. How does she write? What does she write? So she she writes poems. I feel like they're kind of quirky, like like funny, humorous. Just just her personal experiences. Right. I, I write about my personal experiences, but now that I feel like I have an opportunity to be more of a leader, I try to think about poems that could uplift people. Yes. So I, I didn't mention, but um, one of the awards that I got for my poetry was this foundation that's recent in South Carolina. I met um, this person. She was a Marine. I met her through... Um, my administrator when I was working in public school, it was her daughter and she ended up getting killed by a drunk driver. So the poem that I wrote was called um, my poem to fight. This is my poem to fight and basically encouraging them to not give up because, you know, it, it kind of felt like he got a slap on the wrist, you know, with mm. all of it that they'd gone through with losing their daughter because she was, she was in her um, earlier twenties. So right. she was younger than me. And, and so that just really hit me hard, but to be able to use my voice to, to be a voice yes. for um, those hurting, I'm all about that. So that, that just felt so real for me to be able mm. to do that for that family. So. Thank you for sharing that. And 
your uh, so your mother you've you've inherited some writing genes from your mum yes. uh, basically and so does she become your become a critic of your work as well um she's very good at editing so i will definitely i definitely go to her you know if oh, i need great. something edited oh um, that's awesome <laughs> mm -hmm. so I, I use her for her for her her gift <laughs> that's brilliant that's brilliant so tell me, uh, Tracy, how many poems have you written? Do you know? A lot. <laughs> oh, give me some idea. Uh, in the teens, in the hundreds, in the thousands, in the probably in the thousands. I started. I started young. I started when I was thirteen. So mm. I still have like a like I said, a big stack of poems and, and stuff. So, and um, one is one of my, um, I guess, high school and middle school poems is in a, is in a book already um, that I wrote, but yeah, it's still more. And I've done a lot of contests like submission submissions. So I really like prompts. Like if there's a theme, you know, because that, that helps me. <laughs> I don't like the um, contest where it's like, oh, write whatever you want. I don't know what you like, but if you give me a, if you give me a theme, then I'm, I'm more able to kind of, you know, maneuver. And then if I don't win, I know it wasn't because of my, you know, writing It's just because you didn't like my style. So I can move on. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> you know, so that, that's how I operate, but yes, a lot of poems. A lot of poems. And how many of them are published? Um, I have, I'm going to give you an estimate. Yeah, <laughs> you're, go you're for on it. The spot. Um, about 50. Mm -hmm. 50. Because I have I... To, mm -hmm, 50 yeah. or more. So, but right. in that range, yes. Oh, okay. Okay. And, and are those from that library of around 50 plus, are those the ones that you use to perform? I perform a, I perform a few. Um, two of them are from that um, book that I wrote in middle school and in high school. But for the most part, I, unless I memorize it, I, I just use what um, poem I already know. But they're old poems. <laughs> right. Like people are like, how can you remember that? They're old. <laughs> yes. Well, you will have performed them many times, I guess, as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Oh gosh. And so when, when, well, let's put it this way, where can people see your performances? Are any of them on video that people can watch? Yes. I won't say that the ones that I perform live are, no. but um, I have videos where I'm actually performing and you can see me close up. And I tell people the one-stop shop is my website. And the reason being is I'm not on social media. <laughs> and um, I told you guys I'm an open book. So basically last year, um, the later part of last year I had to get off. I was being harassed for money and things of that nature. That's, I guess, the drawback of, you know, getting more in the media. So I started getting more heavily in the media and people were you know, just trying to get stuff for me, you know, take, because I care about people, because I want to help people, you know, sometimes yes. you'll have those people that will just try to use you up. <laughs> yeah. But, but I honestly thought when I got off that things were going to kind of, you know, slow down for me, but they haven't. And the reason being is because I'm so heavily in the media and I'm able to navigate and, coordinate with different businesses and corporations that have seen my work on um, a website, whether they read my article, I've been on podcasts, I've been on radio. So they'll listen to my interviews or read a poem that I wrote in one or an article and they'll reach out to me directly. And I like it like that because, <laughs> because I told you previously I was bullied and, you know, treated kind of unfairly um, growing up. I like to build relationships with people. I'm a personal person, but I value respect. 
So when I coordinate things with people, you know, we have to be on the same playing field. You know, if you're being disrespectful to me and, you know, treating me like I'm beneath you or inferior, then we don't need to work together because I'm going to show you the utmost respect and I yes. value that in return. So, yeah. Well, firstly to say thanks for sharing, you know, and I'm sorry that you got all the hassle that you got on social media, but I want to applaud you for coming off of it and being brave enough to still believe you can have a presence without being on there. And that, you know, conventional media, it's still, it's still on the internet, right? <laughs> and the internet is still the biggest place in the world to be discovered. And there is, there is, arguably more credibility being in conventional media, I believe, because in social media, it's okay. You could say it's social proof, how many followers you have, but people buy followers. Um, you know, they, they do stuff that's just, just to show off to say, look mm -hmm. at the amount of followers I have. And it's just not about that. It's, it's never been about that. It's about the relationships you have. And you don't need to be on social media to have relationships. So well, well done for showing all of us <laughs> that you can be, you know, have a presence without being on social media. That's really refreshing to hear. And I will add that um, I will not say that social media is is totally bad. No. Um, it what I will say that with me personally as a creative um, and that I am the brand of my company that I would encourage people to utilize social media as a tool to connect to, to connect to the right people that are going to help it grow. So instead of focusing on what I used to do was kind of focus on getting more followers and stuff, I never really got any more followers. What I learned was I need to connect myself with these business corporations, these do partnerships, and I was able to build relationships with them because that was my niche. I'm personal. So I was able to connect with them. And through word of mouth, word of mouth is still effective. Even with all of the technology, word of mouth is still effective. And so when you have the right mindset and your goal is to help people, people want to help people that want to help people. So, so it's like when you have that, that in mind and building those relationships with the right people, you will be surprised at the opportunities that come because I still talk to these people that were on my social media, but we built a relationship together. Yeah, 100%. And it's also, I think, sometimes I think, oh, for God's sake, stop texting me, stop emailing me, just pick up the phone and talk to me, you know, <laughs> um, because that's, if we can't be together in the same room speaking to each other, and of course we haven't been able to for many years, then let's just talk on the phone and hear the energy of our voices because that's, that's, you know, so important, I believe. And that's why I, I think I just briefly mentioned it to you before we went to record, but that's why, this whole new area of social audio is so popular because people can hear people's voices and they don't have to get, you know, ready to be on camera, but they, they can just talk across a platform to talk to other people. And there is an energy exchange, I believe that happens because people can really listen to your voice and see if you're authentic and genuine. Tracy, what have we not covered that you would like to share? Um, again, I just want to say that my website is my one-stop shop. And my website is different. And I say different in a good way because mm. I utilize my website as an opportunity to further those that have given me an opportunity. Yeah. So I, I told my husband with, this website, I don't care how successful I get, these people are going to be on here so that the others that come and visit will know the journey 
Who yes. gave her a chance? How did she get here? Well, these people are the reason I got here. So I know that some websites they have as featured. My as featured is different because I basically focus on the ones that have given me a chance. I have not yet to get a national or inter, um, major international or national award. But these people that gave me a chance before this, they're going to be highlighted. So I really value that, that as featured, because yes. I know that's different. I want yeah. people to know who gave me a chance before that, before the major accolades, before it just completely blows up. You're going to know who, who was there. Yeah. And that matters to me. Fantastic. I love it. And what's the website address? It is Tracy, T-R-A-C-I, Neil, N-E-A-L, speakerpoet.com. Tracy, Neil, speakerpoet.com. Yeah. Okay, so tell us about the speaking then. So you don't just do poetry, you do speaking too. Yes. So um, yesterday, I, like I said, talked to the kids. I read my books but I also use personal experiences, talking on their level, but use personal experiences of, about how, it doesn't matter where you start, it's how you finish. And so this is where I started, but I continue to grow. And so it's just a way for me to encourage the young people. So my target audience is youth. So children to college age is my niche. And so I just utilize the lessons and the experiences that I've had to empower the young people that they can succeed to, because I don't think enough of <laughs> young people are out there trying to empower other, other young people like as effectively as they could in a positive yes. way. And I also try to teach life skills so that the people can grow as a person individually so I'll give an example um with one of the boy groups um one of the questions I ask is what do you do when you're alone like what do you do by yourself when you're alone when no one else is around and one boy said that um he trashes his home you know but I didn't react I I have that relationship and that repertoire with youth I just said um so who cleaned you know kind of made it made it light I said well who cleans the mess when you make the mess and he said oh my sister my dad or my mom and I said why don't you clean the mess you made the mess <laughs> <laughs> so so he got it so he kind of laughed and then um this other question I asked with the um with that correlating that I said, what is something positive that you can do when you have, you know, you're an emotional place, whether you're mad, you're sad, you're, you know, whatever yeah. emotion you're feeling. Mm. And he said, um, I can punch a wall, <laughs> you know, something like that. And I, and I just kind of, you know, rubbed his back and I said, um, do you like sports? I'm gonna, I'm gonna need you to try to see if you can get involved in something to let out that that anger yeah. that you're feeling and so mm -hmm. he mentioned some sports that he liked like basketball and soccer I said well I, I, I'm gonna encourage you to do that you know there's some positive things you can do to get out that that anger mind you I don't know what he might be dealing with at home or you know whatever have you but I just I try to plant a seed to let them yes. know that you know there is a better way you don't have to just react off of your emotions and, and things of that nature that you can rise above it and, and do better, but you just have to find that outlet. And I told them that is your happy place. You're going to have to find your happy place, you know, to, to get you back into focus, calm you down and stuff. Like we all have to find our happy place <laughs> because there's a lot of negativity out there. And, and sometimes I feel like I'm trying to bring so much positivity and there's this negativity just, like, you know, but you have to find that happy place in the midst mm. of all of that. A hundred percent. I couldn't agree with you more. And we, we all need to be able to do that. And if we can start, if we can start building that muscle when we're younger, you know, I wish I had more of that when I was younger, probably. And 
if you can build that muscle and, and find the strategies and condition your mind at a young age, it will stay with you forever. Because if he continues, you know, thrashing the home, punching a wall, that's going to stay with him like a conditioned in his brain that that's his outlet for doing for, for solving whatever is going on for him. So yeah, awesome. Well done. And the other thing I was came to me was it's the way the children react when they doesn't don't necessarily have a voice, right? So if he hasn't got a voice or she hasn't got a voice, she may do something physically. Mm -hmm. But, and often the reaction they are, that's coming out of them is as a result of the people around them too. It's, that's a possibility. I'm not saying it is mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in this particular case, but children, they soak up energy from adults around them and they then demonstrate, <laughs> you know, it comes out of them. And we, we as adults go, what's wrong with them? You know, well, it's because of how I was behaving that they've taken that energy and then are expelling it. Um, I, I think I read somewhere and we, my wife and I were discussing it about her sons, my stepsons. And I said, be, although they're no longer inside of you, inside of the mother, whatever the mother is feeling emotionally, children feel it. <laughs> you know, they're still kind of connected. There's no umbilical cord, but energetically they're still connected and they express it somehow. I don't know if that's all rubbish, but I genuinely do believe it. <laughs> so Tracy, I, we, we did not, we didn't talk about this before we started interviewing, but is it really, you can say no. Have you got a tiny little poem you could share with us that you think might be useful for our listeners to hear? Yes, this is, um, I call this a freebie because Thank I you. do, I do, yes, I do have <laughs> people that ask and, and I share, but um, I say that this poem is like my theme poem. I wrote this when I was in high school, but it's funny that I feel like my poetry in, in my younger years really reflected who I am as an adult now. I feel like wow. it really was divine. <laughs> so th this poem is called Hiding Behind the Corner. Right. I used to be the girl hiding behind the corner. I felt like a loner. Yet even when I cried, I thought I had died to a world I had to face, but still the people lied. I must admit I couldn't take it. I truly believed I wouldn't make it. Then one day something inside this vessel said, don't fake it, but break it. So I broke the walls that were tearing me apart and ripping out my heart until the fall I was about to hit came into a line for starts. I just kept running since I couldn't stop. I ran like a criminal trying to get away from the cops. I got rid of the haters, the perpetrators, the two-facers, and the instigators. I changed my way of thinking and didn't mind blinking. If times were too hard, I wouldn't stack it up with those deck of cards. I became stronger and could stand longer, not trying to measure up to a world going under. I gained respect and advanced my intellect to a place I didn't expect. Now I can walk up to a person untimid and shy. I'm a newfound eagle and I'm ready to fly. I have to speak before my spirit leaps with anticipation, determination, imagination, and an accepted application. No, I'm not always accepted by those around me, but my soul has life that a blind person can see. I have a voice that needs to be spread in order to have true peace in my head. My spirit creates a difference in the essence of the confident presence I show when I decided not to be led thank you <laughs> thank you that's so amazing <laughs> oh my god <laughs> it always shocks people it's it i just did not expect that at all <laughs> oh god this is great i love it uh because you're such a gentle, mm -hmm. sweet, <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Um, and you just transformed. I mean, you just transformed in this wonderful, beautiful artist that you are. Thank you so much for doing that. I nearly didn't ask and I was a bit frightened. Say, well, you know, that's a bit unfair putting you on the spot, but I'm glad I did have the courage to ask you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Tracy. That was truly amazing. Beautiful. Um, I really, really appreciate that. Thank you. Yes. Wow. Um, that's blown me away. Um, I wish you so much success with your continued journey. You're doing such fantastic stuff out there. And I will most definitely promote your podcast, this interview, further than it could reach. I mean, I already I'm on a lot of channels. It's, it, you know, we're published on 34 channels. So, but it will go. I've got some people in mind I want to send it to as well um, so they can hear your story. Thank you so much. We'll get people to check out Tracy Neal, speakerpoet.com. And thank you so much for being on the show. I appreciate it. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. Please stay in touch. I will definitely stay in touch with you. Take care and all the best. Bye for now. Bye. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please rate, subscribe and share at will. I'm always looking for more listeners and guests, so do get in touch, please. You can find me pretty easily by searching for Staying Alive UK. Thank you. Staying Alive UK. Share your story.